Hey everybody, it's Tyler Austin. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to compare the different zeros, the 25, 50, and 100 yard zero with 762 by 39. Hopefully this comparison will give you a better understanding of what um, your, point of in, your point of aim, point of impact difference will be with different zeros at different ranges so it can give you uh, more knowledge and give you a better understanding so you can go um, and choose a, make a more informed decision on what zero to choose for your rifle. Now understand that I'm gonna be using a very vanilla example here. So um, just like your standard 16 inch barrel out of an AK, um, shooting your basic 124 grain full metal jacket with a muzzle velocity of around 2300 feet per second. Now, if your loadout it's a little bit different, like you're running a shorter barrel or, and or using different ammunition, your ballistic trajectory will vary from this. So um, be aware of that. And there's lots of free shooting calculators, ballistic um, calculators out there on the internet that you can use and plug in your specific um, data and it will give you a pretty accurate idea of what your holdovers will be. So with that being said, let's uh, go ahead and compare these zeros. Okay, so with a 25 yard zero, at 25 yards, point of aim, point of impact will be exactly the same because it's a 25 yard zero. Now understand anything below 25 yards, um, you will hit slightly low. Uh, due to your height over board difference. So if you're shooting a target at let's say five yards, you're gonna be roughly an inch and a half low due to height over board. And that's gonna depend on whether or not you're using irons or an optic or a red dot, whatever, and your specific height over bore. At 50 yards, you're gonna be roughly an inch and a half high. And then at 100 yards, you're gonna be about three inches high. And obviously this is kind of a, um, this is just like an IPSEP target. So, on a real human being, you're aiming high center mass um, at 25 yards. At 100 yards, you're gonna be impacting right around the base of the neck slash clavicle region. Back down to 200 yards, um, point of aim, point of impact's gonna be, again, the same. Technically, you're gonna be roughly like a half inch low, but at 200 yards, a half inch is virtually nothing, especially if you're using iron sights or a red dot. Then at 300 yards, you're going to be roughly 16 inches low. Again, on a normal human being, aiming rough at um, high center of mass, high um, thoracic cavity, uh, bullet impact's going to be just below the belly button on your average height male, give or take. At 400 yards, you're going to be 48 inches low. So right around the knee slash shin area. So you're gonna definitely need to hold over um, about roughly half his height over his head to get around somewhere in the torso. At 500 yards, you're gonna be 103 inches low, which is gonna be way below the feet. Um, so you're gonna need to hold over um, his height plus a little bit more um, in order to get around somewhere in his torso. Um, the nice thing about 25 yard zero is that basically from zero to 300 yards, you can aim high center of mass and hit somewhere in the torso region. Um, so that's really the nice thing about a 25 yard zero. Um, one disadvantage is that at 100 yards, at right around 100 yards, you're going to be about three inches high. So depending on uh, how much precision you want, you might need to do a slight hold under if you want to hit um, right high up in the center mass, right in the heart region. All right, let's talk about the 50 yard zero. So at 25 yards, you're gonna be about an inch low. At 50 yards, point of aim, point of impact, of course. At 100 yards, you're gonna be roughly an inch high. One nice thing about the 50 yard zero is that from zero to 100 yards, your bullet's gonna impact within two inches of your point of aim. So that's one really nice um, aspect of 50 yard zero. At 200 yards, you are going to impact roughly six inches low. So again, you know, at, from zero to 200 yards, your bullet's gonna impact somewhere between seven and eight inches of your point of impact from zero to three, or from zero to 200 yards. 
at 300 yards are going to impact at about 25 inches low so on a normal human being um, you're aiming high um, center of mass at 25 inches low is going to hit him somewhere in the groin area so at 300 yards you're going to want to do a little bit of a holdover in order to get that round somewhere higher up in the torso at 400 yards you're going to be 60 inches low so again somewhere in like the shin area um, so that's definitely going to need a holdover you're going to need a holdover about his height um, and the at a, and at 500 yards it's going to be 118 inches low so again you're going to need to roughly double that individual's height um, in terms of you're going to have to hold over about double his height um, in order to get a good um, torso hit at 500 yards using a 50 yard zero now let's talk about the 100 yard zero now luckily this is going to be pretty quick because a 50 and 100 yard zero are virtually identical at 25 yards you're going to be about an inch and a half low depending on your specific height over bore offset at 50 yards you're going to be roughly a half inch low and at 100 yards point of aim point of impact from 200 to 500 yards the drop offs and the holdovers are exactly the same of that as that of the 50 yard zero so at 200 yards you're going to be six inches low 300 yards uh 25 inches low and at 460 inches low 500 118 inches low so that's what you can expect out of these three zeros shooting your standard 16 inch uh barreled ak um with 120 with your standard 124 grain um, ball ammunition with a muzzle velocity of around 2300 feet a second again if your setup is different you got to take that into account and calculate that into some sort of um, ballistic calculator to figure out your specific holdovers at different with different zeros now in terms of which zero to choose I would highly suggest that you avoid choosing a zero based on what some dude on the internet said or based off what instructor uses or said was the best zero whatever. Base it off of your personal preferences and based off of your environment or AO. Um, for example, I live in New Hampshire, which is very hilly, very woodland. So unless I decide to get into a rifle fight in the middle of one of the local golf courses, taking a shot past 200 yards is fairly unlikely. So I would be more apt to use a 50 or 100 yard zero that has a tighter shot group from zero to 200 yards rather than let's say a 25 yard zero that might be best for a, an environment such as like Nevada where ranges can exceed well past 300 yards and a 25 yard zero will put, um, will have a better, um, uh, will have a better spread between zero and 300 yards and have less holdovers at further distances, for example. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a zero. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Keep a watch out for my next video, you fellow 545 fans, because I'm gonna do the same thing um, comparing the different zeros for 545. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, follow, depending on where you're watching this. I'm Tyler Austin. Thank you so much for watching.